I hung in there long. Hey guys, how's it going? Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hey, what's happening, peeps? Perfect. Not much. We're Yay, Peach! <laughs> Steve, I came across a picture today of the two of us on the set of Hi Honey I'm Home, and I'm pontificating about something. And you're wearing a plastic fireman's hat and you're on your knees, like, you know, pretending to listen. I don't know if we were doing a skit for the audience or Steve was a big, uh, very hammy in front of the in-studio audience. I could see that for sure. Yeah, Gotta keep yeah it was only when the cameras were rolling that my true naturalism <laughs> came out and all that hamminess just disappeared. I, actually, it's, it's very interesting because we were hilarious live <laughs> i mean really it was like the best live sitcom taping you've ever seen and then i mean we didn't need a warm act a warm-up act nothing and you know when you see a sitcom shoot in la it's so boring and on the air it's great and we were the opposite <laughs> uh -oh. I don't know about that. Yeah. however those sitcoms are on the air and we're not <laughs> precisely. Hey, who can you guys, Travis? How you doing, yes. I'm Peter? Peter, it's nice to meet you. We, we, you, we've only really talked to to Stephen and uh, Danny and, and Danny via email. So I'm glad to see Peter and, and Charlotte. You all joining us as well. That's great. Hi, Hi Charlotte. Steven. You love you. Aww. Yep. I love you too. I'm sure you know that's not a surprise. <laughs> when I say that. Steve, are you reclining on on like what like did you hurt your back or it's a life of leisure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's relaxing no it's a very expensive chair <laughs> <laughs> so i know we're expecting at least danny to jump in too so we'll wait for him to get in before we really start going with everything but uh definitely thank you all for spending the time with us tonight we do appreciate yeah, that absolutely so who are you guys and what do you do? Yeah, so uh, the two of us together, we make up two guys into Fridays. We uh, go back and we watch every single week of TGIF exactly as it aired 30 years before. So oh, whatever so happened terrible. to air exactly 30 years ago, that's what we're watching. That's what we're talking about this week. So we're right, between, we're right at the end of season one of Hi Honey, I'm Home, and we thought it was the perfect time to bring all of you guys on. And you're down in Florida? No, we're in a... a we're right outside of Richmond, Virginia. Oh, okay. Good. I, I thought maybe Florida, because Florida's kind of 30 years behind. The <laughs> <laughs> right, they're just, they're just getting to us now. We're a hit. <laughs> yeah, it's a fair assessment. Yeah, they're... On the East Coast, we're huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Charlotte, talk to I me. I mean, you go, Steve, you go down to the Keys. You can't walk down the fucking street, brother. <laughs> I mean, you get mobbed, right? it's People like just coming out of the bars. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's Peter. It, yeah. It's Steve. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> That's uh, Mike Duff. <laughs> my personal experience in Key West was you couldn't walk down the street because it was full of drunks trying to look like Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> That's also true. I've seen that happen before. Man. But, but you know what? They're all terrific writers. Yeah. <laughs> They're all terrific drinkers. Yeah, well, <laughs> can you have one without the other? Speaking of Fair. terrific writing, I built a boat and I wrote about it to try to raise, you know, raise the level of my game. And I came out to my desk today and Water. Someone spilled water <laughs> what? on oh. on all the pages of my writing. Dear. Wow. So I'll just have to write better. Wow. You, back up? you didn't back it up on the computer? I'm, I'm in the process. And in the process of backing it up, Charlotte, I'm like, ooh, that's bad. Right. right. <laughs> I think I'll skip Dude. that. Of all the powers that I ascribe to our good Lord, I never thought editor was was one of them. Yeah, well, you, well, okay. You're being forced if, to edit on the, in this example, Peter. If if you think God is saying this sucks, 
I'm, I'm not going to take that hint. <laughs> wow. Nora, is, isn't Danny joining us? Yeah, he's, he's supposed, supposed to. to. I, I was going to shoot him an email really quick, unless one of you has a more immediate form of communication with him and can, and can Yeah, just him. shoot him. Yeah. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> well, if we were in Florida, maybe. But, uh... Yes, right. Charlotte, it looked to me like you have a thin layer of Vaseline. <laughs> Over your camera. I do. And another one over my face. <laughs> oh, you know what? For some reason, my iPad it, it takes a much better picture than my laptop. The laptop is always fuzzy. I don't know why. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Are, are any of you able to text him or, or message him in any way? I, if not, I can send him an email, but it seems like it'd probably be quicker. If I think if... all I have is an email. Let me go okay. look and see if I have a... I can, it's not a big deal. I can email him real quick. On some other device. I can text him. I, I turned my phone off when we started, but I'll turn my phone back on. Yeah, he's, been, he's, been pretty, he's been pretty quick to respond to email, so hopefully he'll see it. Yes, I agree. Do, 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 um, That's a great theme song. It really is. So I did a, I did the mystery of Edwin Drood on Broadway, and Rupert Holmes wrote that, and he wrote our theme song. Oh, wow. and so the, years and years later, we made that connection. He said, "Mike Duff," and I was like, <laughs> "Rupert Holmes, you wrote the theme song," and, and I meant, it. huh? And sang it. Well, I meant, yeah, I meant to at the closing, at our closing parties, sing it for him, but it never, it never happened. Who, who did the remix in the, in the uh, closing credits? Oh, yeah. The little, like, who did the what? There's the like remix. the techno version and like the outro and the, of it. And the closing the credits? Yeah, I don't know who did that. I, yeah, I okay. assume Rupert did it. Okay. But I, I don't know. Yeah, I did a reading of one of his plays too. He writes some great stuff. Yeah, he's and very he's interesting. Like, guy. oh, hi, yeah, hi, honey. Yeah. <laughs> it was a play about um, Ronald Reagan meeting. Oh God, another president, and I won't be able to think who. But it was really, really good. Well, I like it already. Yeah. Who played Reagan? Steve you know Bradbury. What? I don't remember anything about the, about it. <laughs> that's sad. That's just sad. No, that's what we learned to do, Charlotte, right? Yes. Pick something up, engage fully, be passionate about it, and then drop it like a hot potato just Which because is- you have to. That's survival. You know, I often call myself a professional forgetter. Man, I wish I knew I could get paid for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I was a military brat, so I I it's second nature to me. It's it's hell on relationships. <laughs> Charlotte, right? I don't know if you remember this, but I I'm a diplo brat. Yeah. And I think it's very um, I think it's really damaging actually. And to our parents' generation, it was like, you know, the, at least in the foreign service, it was like so glamorous you raise your family all over the world it's amazing the kids get so cultured it's so good for them blah 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 Dang. and actually it's more interesting to mark. be from to be from one place i'm drawing us know? all period love you did you just call danny i just sent him a text that's so, so on our last meeting when you thought i was such an electronics bozo now you see, I'm quite proficient. Yeah, the talk text is definitely a level up, Steve. Yeah. yeah. By the way, are you Mr. Two Guitars No Waiting here? Is that what's going on back there, my friend? Two guitars, no piano, drums. Look at that. Oh. Bunk beds for very late night sessions. Wow. Are you on the set Buddha's- of Step Brothers right now? <laughs> It's all just God. I I just racked the neighborhood today, looking like. Does anyone have any instruments? I gotta look cool. (laughs) 
Does anyone have any cash? <laughs> Nobody I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, this is. So, not what are you working on, Pete? Um, I'm actually. This, this is so. Uh, I want to well, hear it. We, we run a dancing school, you know, my wife and I run this dancing school. And so we bought, uh, uh, six years ago, we bought a, uh, 1870s Baptist church in our town and oh. that's our studios. So I've totally renovated that place. This is while we were still in New York, you know, and, um, uh, so we run that studio. So I help her run that studio and I clean the toilets and empty the garbage and te teach tap dancing. And um, I occasionally audition, although I just got a message from my agent wondering if I'm okay after the storm. So that's the level of that communication. Oh. And I'm wondering if I should go to, this is so, whatever, you're the first to hear this. If I should go to boat school uh, because I love carpentry and I love wooden boats passionately. Like, like I really love, I really oh, love wooden boats. Good. And um, I'd like to get good, really like proficient at making them. And mostly I'm an autodidact. I, I like to do that. I hate being in groups, especially when you get into the wooden boat world. It's all like middle-aged guys like me. Uh, old guys like me, you know, kids gone to college and they're sitting around going like, I want to make boats, you know, and I just hate being part of that group. But uh, there I am. <laughs> so, where I'm, is, where yeah. are you located now? Are you up in are you the Rhode Island, so, Connecticut area? So I'm right now I'm I'm in Connecticut. We've had this house for years and years, Travis. Yeah. And um, when the pandemic hit, my kids had gone to college. They're both at school in New Haven. And this house is right near there. And we just decided to pull the plug, you know, on, yeah. on New York, which is really hard. But a lot of stuff is a lot of uh, stuff uh, is self tape now anyway. So, you know, I just go over to our studio and lay myself down on tape. And if I have to, I'm two hours from the city. So if they yeah. want to see me or something, I drive in. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. New Haven's a nice little town. You have a, New Haven you have a, is such a great town. Sorry. Do you have a, uh, oh. favorite pizza place? I, yeah, it's Pepe's. So what's that like going from New York pizza on a regular basis, I'm sure, to, to New Haven? Uh, New Haven pizza is better. I, just, I don't disagree with you. New Haven pizza is better, except my favorite pizza joint for years I don't even think they use real cheese. It's a place called Coronet. It's on 112th and Broadway. So I used to hit it on my way out of town to go up to this house. And the, their specialty is, is pieces, slices that are like so big, you have to hold them with two hands and kind of fold them and then drain the grease. And then, and I got really good at like eating them while driving and you know, pizza is all about context, right? Sure. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So In New York slice, that sounds like the cornets. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, yeah, uh, right. New Haven actually is great that. pizza, so amazing this, pizza. And Pepe's, uh, even though it's like world famous, is actually that is, good. Is that good? Love that. Last time I was up there, the line of Pepe's was too long. All the so best, I went to the and got their pizza, and I thought it was phenomenal. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And it's still the real deal. You know, it's still like, yeah. you know, it's it's so fun to eat there. So. Steven, are we having any luck with, with Danny? Uh, yeah, I just called him, too, and I just got a... Uh, be right the there. Okay, cool. Actually, I mean, I must put the whole thing. Oh, poo. Be right there. <laughs> did, he, did he really say that? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm going to show my door. My cat opened it. Hold on one second. Look at Travis's... Are you auditioning for anything? What'd you say? 
Charlotte, are you auditioning for anything? Are you kidding me? No. I actually, I'm I'm waiting to hear about something I, that I thought I'd hear about today. So I'm thinking maybe it might be, you know, gone with the wind. Gone with the wind. But isn't it, uh, Charlotte? Let me ask you. Let me ask you your strategy for that. I like to like. I like to not. If I'm on hold for something and it goes a little long, I like to not call my agent and find out because I love the idea that it's still out there. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And my wife gets so frustrated. She's like, well, it, are, are you doing that thing or not? And I'll be like, I just, I haven't heard yet. <laughs> Even All though right. I know like it's dead. You know, I will talk with actors who say, you know, oh, I never talk about, I don't never want to talk about an audition or any job I've auditioned for that might be coming up. And I say, you know, the vast majority of the time, the only pleasure I get is talking about it as a possibility yeah you know yeah because not a big enough percentage of anything comes through so yeah i'm willing to talk about it from the first moment they say hey you interested yeah a couple of weeks ago i was up for this this hello i guess it's gonna be a series hey, I was gonna play. hey, Daddy. hey danny hi guys welcome that is so on me i i, I <laughs> it's monday already it is Monday. It got I to be I I I'm so sorry, gentlemen. Yeah. No worries. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Whatever, all the man. Work you've done to help get this corralled in the first place. So thank you for that. I I I have I have zero. I am so sorry. That's that's completely on me. No worries. Well, you look, a wife look good, kids. Danny. You look healthy. <laughs> I see people well rest now taking a nap. Yeah. There's a fork on the wall. Life is good. <laughs> oh yeah. That's our lovely fork. <laughs> Let me see what I can catch you up on, Danny. Uh, Steven's got a really expensive chair he's in. Uh, yeah. Peter is on the set of Step Brothers right now. <laughs> and he's also thinking about building a boat. Um, Charlotte uh, had something she was going to hear back from in an audition, but hasn't. So she's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Uh, Gone with the wind. That's what's coming back. So she's going to try out for that. <laughs> Gone with the wind, too. <laughs> Gone with the wind, too. And uh, Travis and I are here right outside of uh, Richmond, Virginia, getting ready to talk with the cast of Hi Honey, I'm Home. Fantastic. I remember that show. Yeah. Well, again, yeah. again, we've said it once, but uh, thank you everyone for coming on. We really do appreciate it. <laughs> a pleasure, and, Travis, Steven. And uh, I mean, start from the beginning. Like, uh, who wants to tell us a story about like how this show came to them? I mean, I know you guys, some of you have been acting a bunch before, but like Danny's a child at this point, uh, Peter's teenager at this point. So like, how did you get on this show? Whoever wants to start, whatever you uh, well, want. Well, let me just, let me just, so one thing that was a big thing for me was that I was not a teenager. Oh. Um, I was a working New York actor and this part came up and, and I went and I, I got really close to it and he was, I think Mike Duff was supposed to be 16 or 17 and I was 26 and um, that was really like, that was that was tricky for my head because you spend so much of your life uh, trying to grow up and then suddenly you're getting paid for for you know for regressing and, you know it's it's a it's a weird place to be in and i remember i remember when it was getting down to the wire auditioning and and stuff the producers would call me at home and or set up and i would um I would raise my voice, you know, to try to mm. sound younger. And uh, that was kind of a goofy thing to do. But, you know, what do you know? <laughs> well, and the, you know what's curious to me I, that I, I never found out because I was the only one who actually lived in Florida was the local hire. You guys were all New Yorkers. When yeah. they came to you, when you were auditioning for the show, did they say, hey, we're, we're starting this new studio in Orlando. We're bringing work down there. Like, was it a surprise that it wasn't in L.A. or New York or anything? Did you guys no, you'd be stuck in Orlando for all of this? Well, yes, because Stephen and I had already done um, a pilot for Nick at Night, a, a previous pilot, and I can't remember. Can you remember the name of it, Steve? It was called The Early Days. The Early Days. The Early Years, something like that. The Early that. Days. Yeah. The Early Days Together? of what? Oh, it, was a, it was a TV, uh, Early Days of Television. Oh. Charlotte, who was the guy who played the lead in that? 
marvelous actor who died of AIDS. Ray Gill. Oh, God. Ray Gill. He was wonderful. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. He you guys had already been together. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And Steve played a kind of a Ralph Bellamy type, you know, always sort of, <laughs> sort of holding right. Holding the leading actress's coat while she went away with her, her yeah. husband. And I work as much today as Ralph Bellamy does. <laughs> <laughs> so, so were, were you all one of the first shows that was that was shot at the Nick and Knight Studios at, at Nickelodeon Studios, or we were there pretty early? I mean, I know that we were we were the first Nick at Night show. That's for sure. I, I yeah, know, right. I know Clarissa explains it all was filming on on the opposite end of us. Yeah. Right, but we were the first sort of three camera drive by real live, you know, show. Remember the studio tour, the next studio tour would have the, the windows that the people would go by above us. And oh, that's would, right. I forgot that. Look, the, the, so the studio tour would be able to look in for us. And I remember on Friday nights when they had to go beg people to sit in the audience for the show. <laughs> Did you actually go other? out in your Boy Scout uniform and get people to come in? <laughs> <laughs> hey, come in. <laughs> the funny thing is, so Eric and I, when we were tutored on set, uh, we used to, obviously, we were 13 years old and, you know, on a TV show. So the last thing we want to do is be tutored on a set or be in, set up in a classroom. So we used to take breaks. When we, when we take a break, <laughs> we would do the stupidest thing, the two of us. We used to, we'd laugh the whole time. We'd run. We, I mean, like, we would run from, from where the little... Um, uh, school classroom was we'd run to where the line up was to, to the to the actual theme park to where people were lining up on the theme park to take the nickelodeon tour and all of a sudden we'd stop maybe about 20 feet away uh and, and then we just start walking slowly like oh we're just casually walking two guys who are on this tv show we're just casually walking just so we can walk by the line so the uh barkers could say hey look here come two people from high Home. home look at that wow yeah <laughs> Seamless. that's how we fed our egos back then do you remember that, speaking of egos, do you remember like some television show like like Entertainment Tonight or something came and interviewed us? Yeah, oh, it was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, I was taking the airplane on the way back uh, during a break and... Your private plane. No, but this is like my first, like I thought, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm famous. I, I was sitting in coach, you know, because because I was, it was a volunteer, it was a, you know, I, they didn't have to fly me back. So I was sitting in, you know, regular class and, and this girl in front of me uh, gets up in her seat and turns around and looks at me. And then she sits down in her seat and I hear her say to mom, 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 that's Mike Duff from hi honey, I'm home. And the mom goes, don't be silly, dear. If it was, he certainly wouldn't be sitting back here with us. <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys were, when you guys made like the first season, did you know that that was going to be something that was on TGIF? Or at that time, did you think it was going to be a Nickelodeon show? Or how did, what was the story with that? Charlotte, what do you know? Yeah, she was closer to the power centers. Oh, please. Um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's me, mover and shaker. Um, it, it, we didn't know at first. In fact, when we didn't find out that it was going to be ABC for quite a while, and if I'm not mistaken, I think we were the first cable network uh, collaboration. Yeah. yeah. As yeah. a result. Um, they did the roadblock. Remember the roadblock? No. Where they'd come on the other network or whatever and say, and now, you know, this is going to be a show that's, uh, I guess, simulcast on. The Nick first Nick episode they did that. Right? Because I remember when the first episode aired, we all watched it there on, on set. And I remember, yeah, um, uh, all the Viacom stations had broken like right before our, our, our show aired. So all the MTV, all the Viacom stations at the time broke in and said, <laughs> hey, I had him home was about to premiere on, uh, yeah. on TGIF. And the Steered everyone at TGIF. I remember that. Yeah, it was unique because you had that Friday night is where it would premiere on TGIF. And then two days later, it'd be on, I guess, I think it was Sunday night. It would be on Nick at Night. And I, Charlotte, like you said, I believe you were one of, if not the first show that that ever happened. And yeah. so was that instant I mean, rerun, they called it. Instant rerun. Was that what that was? That was, mm -hmm. was yeah. that a, like, did, did, 
was that weird or was that unique? I mean, how did you all, did you all notice that? Did you all notice the fact that- Let me tell you, this is, this is really true. The first thing I noticed is the craft service table got (laughs) huge. And that is no kidding. Overnight, suddenly craft service was like way better. We went from Oreos to like carrot sticks and, you know. We we need to take these people serious. Yeah, it was like definite, definitely an upgrade. Nice, very nice. Yeah, but also it was really interesting because there were so few shows like us. As I said, I think maybe we were the first that the union didn't quite know what to do with us. Mm. And yeah. as a result, we, if we, I don't want to tell any tales, but we, we really got, we didn't get the pay we should have been getting. That's all. <laughs> oh, really? Because I okay. Well. Uh, <laughs> Whoops! Peter's like I, I was flying coach back back home to New York. I don't know what you're talking about. They told us that the union. I I actually asked my agent to complain about it because, but the but the they said that you know this is this cable thing is new, and yeah. so you have to be patient. We're trying to grow. Blah blah blah. Meanwhile, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. No, you guys recorded two, I mean, it's 13 episodes, two seasons. How long of a period of time was that, that the whole thing was recorded over? Is this like a two-year thing, or? No. Oh, no. No, like eight much months longer. or something? Eight months? About a year, yeah, almost a year. Almost a year. I think it was like 10 months, yeah. Did you, wow. did you all do all the episodes in one shot, or was there a break in between the two seasons. kind of aired seasons? No, we, we had, had a break, break, right? Yeah. Yeah. Had, yeah. yeah. And then... I think everybody here was in the pilot, the original pilot with the with the different yes. lane and the different skunk. So was that yeah I mean, when you all shot that, I mean, was there was was that truly a pilot where we're gonna shoot it, shop it, see what happens, or was there kind of the understanding that it would become a, a series for the two seasons, or at least one season, I guess, at that point? It was a, it wasn't a, definitely gonna be a series yet. I remember that. Right. Um, I remember having to wait and um to find out if it was going to be a series but um what and who what was the name of the fella danny who played skunk in the in the pilot oh uh, aj he, he AJ didn't go on anything i don't know whatever uh, happened uh, we don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he's he's nobody. Okay. a nobody yeah. yeah that was aj he went on to uh be a backstreet boy yeah losing yeah. losing the pilot was the best thing that ever happened to this kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean well the original Elaine, right, who went on to do... Uh, D. Yeah, who did... Yeah. Uh, what is she going to... Uh, I saw her a lot. Will Rogers that. Follies. The Will yeah. Rogers Follies, yeah. yeah. That's why she didn't come back. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the big things of the show, obviously, was all the guest stars that you guys had on. Was there any... One guest star for any of you that you were kind of starstruck by or like really excited to be on the show with you? Yes. But the the first time uh, when I read the script, the very first time I just every once in a while, very rarely, but every once in a while you have a feeling, oh, yeah, I'm going to be doing this. And I just knew it. And I when I got to the sort of surprise at the end, you know, hello, I'm Mr. Mooney. Um, I burst into tears because I I was I remember my sister and me sitting on a, an ugly old green sofa, you know, in O'Fallon, Illinois, watching Here's Lucy, and I was such a Lucy fan and such a Gail Gordon fan. I still oh, am a huge Gail Gordon fan. I I still listen yeah. to old radio, um, uh, Our Miss Brooks, and he's he's a genius. He was a genius and an icon. I I think of oh, genius yeah. timing. And um, that was uh, that was thrilling, absolutely thrilling for me to get to meet. And him. the nicest man too. For both both times, and he oh. came back after the pilot. He was so nice. And I I uh, had an experience with him where I, I you know I look I was thirteen at the time, so I really I knew I knew a lot. Luckily, my dad sat me down and made me watch old TV shows like you know um, the Munsters or. Car 54, where are you? And I mean, some of the really, really good shows uh, that were you know, <laughs> the old days. So I, I, I had a big respect for a lot of these people. I wasn't as familiar with Gail Gordon, to be honest. But I remember he was he was so nice, and he was so nice to me in particular as, as a little kid. He loved us. He was great. How I about you, he... Steve? Do you do you remember a? Was there a particular guest star for you who was? Well, 
I, I completely agree with Charlotte about Gail Gordon. Just, yeah. He was such an icon. And when I got down there, uh, you know, we'd rehearsed all, first of all, we'd rehearsed all week without him. Right. He came in for the one day and we did the dinner scene in rehearsal. And he said his line there, whatever it was, a line we'd heard every day in rehearsal <laughs> all week. Yeah. He said it and everybody fell out of their chairs. Yeah. And We're then, all out of a job. Oh my God! Remember, do you remember what he said after that? Oh, what time? Yeah, he looked at his watch and said, "What time tomorrow?" <laughs> right, <laughs> right, absolutely. God, I remember that now. Yeah, Danny, yeah. Peter, I was anyone? Doing, oh, go ahead. I was doing a few good men at the time, and Gail Gordon <clears throat> said to me, he "said uh, Oh, you're at the music box," and I said, "I said yes," and he said, "Ah." Uh, uh, I was at the Broadhurst in 1929 with, and when I wanted to talk about the show, and it's just one of the things I so love about theater and stuff like that. Just yay. <laughs> Peter, what about you? Is there one that, that stuck out for you? For me, Peter? For you, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think I was very cavalier about all that at the time. You know, I didn't really... I mean, to hear Charlotte and Steve talk about it now, it really jogs my memory about those things. But I was sort of in a rush, you know, I just but but I mean, some things are wild. Like I remember Jim Neighbors. That was and you're just going, wow, this is just wild. You know, it's like it's worlds colliding, you know, um, and that's kind of interesting. But, you know, when you're young, uh, you kind of think. um you kind of think that's the way it's always going to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so you don't, um, it, you know, you don't take the time to go, wow, this is, this is great. You know? Yeah. And, and so you get, you know, you, you get sort of, you get sort of breezy. I remember, um, well, never mind. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> so Charlotte, what about Alice and Trixie from the Honeymooners? Oh yeah, they were they were a trip. I mean, oh. you know, Joyce Randolph actually sort of stayed in touch with me for a while. Yay! Wow. Yeah, she was lovely, really lovely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, and, and I, I I loved uh, for me it was Barbara Billingsley when she was on, and for the weirdest reason, again because I was a kid, she was the voice of Nanny on the Muppet Babies. <laughs> what? <laughs> so that's... I didn't know that. For me, that's the that's my link to Barbara Billings the outside. I mean, yeah, I know Leave It to Beaver, of course, but she was more of a of the nanny on the Muppet Babies, and I think she was a role on Parker Lewis. I forgot what her role was in Parker, like Parker's grandma or something. I was starstruck by that. But and that shows how generational mm -hmm. these legends really are. Is that yeah. they speak to mm -hmm. each person in such different ways, and and yeah. you know, for the show, it seems like such a it seemed like somewhat of a gimmick. But I'm a sucker for that. And when you bring in those like legends and really let them shine with a cast that that knows how to work with them, it 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 creates a smart show. So it's so cool to hear kind of how each of those touched you all, like throughout throughout the different generations. Well, and you know, the sad thing also for for a lot of these, for some of these people, it was their last appearance on TV. Yeah. And you'd you know you'd, you'd read uh, people fading away, say, boy, that was that was their last appearance was on our shows. It was kind of it was really, really special to have those moments with these people, with these, mm -hmm. with these TV legends like that. Yeah, and, and you all let them kind of relive those moments too, because they weren't coming on as Gail Gordon, and they weren't coming on as Al Lewis, and they were coming on as as you know Grandpa Munster and as Judy, Judy Cleaver, and that's that's fun. That's yeah, fun. yeah. No. Does anyone remember when they wanted George Burns to come down and do it? No. Remember that, Charlotte? No. Oh, because they they called um, George Burns, but they couldn't talk to George at all. They're only talking to his agent. And they said, you know, they wanted him to just come down for the day to do like a line or two, whatever. It'd just be a one day thing. And they said they'd, uh, and they'd pay him $10,000 for the day. And his agent replied, Mr. Burns doesn't do charity. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that story. That's great. Yeah. Now, um, Charlotte, talk about the writers. You know so much about the awards that it came up before about 
what those writers came on to do yeah. and when. Yeah. Yeah. We had the most extraordinary group of writers. Yeah. Well, I had writers were um, Rick Mitz and, and Penny Stallings, and they created the show. But one of our writers won a Pulitzer Prize for uh, um, I Am My Own Wife on Broadway, Doug Wright. Yeah. Yeah. Also yeah. The pre- he was the president of the Dramatists Guild for many years, and also he officiated at my wedding. Um, Yay. And, yeah, and um, one of the writers was um, Irene Mecki. She wrote The Lion King. Oh, wow. um, one of the oh tell tell about the that little girl who used to get coffee for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who wrote The Hunger Games? Yes. Yeah. Susan Collins. I saw. I saw. She was listed as a writer. I thought that was pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so she was really sweet. I remember her. Oh, she was great. And oh, and then the fellow who created Sex in the City, and I, I can never remember his name. It's three names, Michael. It's three names. But anyway, he, he created Sex in the City. We had some incredible writers. Right. No. No. Well, I mean, in that, in that, and, and the show, um, the concept of the show, and actually the, the writing of the show, actually, I have different things to say about its execution, but, but the, there was a that firepower is apparent in the concept and and the mm-hmm. the sort of uh, loving uh, sat satirical nature of the show. You know, it's very very smart actually, the show, yeah. um, and it had the potential to be smarter if it wasn't you know quite so. Anyway, the, I, I don't want to criticize it, but but um, that firepower that 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 authorial firepower is clear you know in the concept and in many ways it was a concept that was ahead of its time that, that's kind of what i was actually talking to steve about the other day was that you know we, we were we we're kind of bouncing around questions and we kind of always wonder what why you all think that it didn't work but it's also that's a kind of just a downer of a question to ask and i was like you know <clears throat> to me it was just almost too smart of a show it, it was really so unique and ahead of its time that that I just think the the humor and the concept of it was probably lost on maybe the TGIF co- audience. Maybe it worked better on Nick at Night, but it was just right. too smart. It was just, it was it was just too smart. And then and then Pleasantville comes along and you know rips off the whole concept anyway. So. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Okay, but what's the new show that ripped it off? Wandavision, it's scene for scene. Wandavision. Yeah. Steve talks about yeah. it. Our episode. pilot, scene for scene. Yeah, yeah. But it also, I think, you know. We, the, when you watch Hi, Honey, I'm Home, there's nothing letting the audience know that that we're that we're hip. Like we know we're. It just it does come off a little bit as you, you don't see it winking, you don't see anything, you don't see the tongue in cheek. So uh-huh. it seems if you don't really know the history of it or anything, it just seems cheesy. <laughs> uh-huh. You're you were the cool guy, Mike. Uh, Mike Mike was the cool guy, Peter. Yes, I mean, but you know, there again, like I should have been cooler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the Turnerizer was one of the best. Yeah. It's a genius concept. A limited opening, so. granted, you know, because now that wouldn't play to anybody. But at the time, oh man, that yeah, was really that was crazy. so juicy. Oh. And that was at the peak of, of Turner Turnerizing stuff. So yeah, that was, yeah. That was the, the right time for something like that. Well, and I remember even the technology to, to do that. I, when they when we would have the black and white color overlays, that blew my mind that they were able to do that. I know they do that so easily now, but I remember watching them when they would set that up and they'd have to have everyone framed a certain way and one person would have to stand in one direction and one person would have to stand somewhere else just to even get the, the color black and white overlays together. Yeah, and I loved that. I loved the... Um, I love the technical work of that. Can you him, please? Uh, say again? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I just love the technical work of that. You know, I loved, like, having to look in certain places and hit your mark exactly. And I, I really loved, I loved doing that, the green screen stuff. Oh, yeah. Charlotte, you went down to, was it uh, New Orleans for the television convention thing? Oh, no. I didn't go. I wasn't invited. <laughs> oh, I thought- uh, it was amazing. I mean, they had these oysters, fried oysters that they just kept throwing at me that were just delicious. Anyway, 
Now, Peter, you weren't <laughs> you weren't technically a Nielsen. You were a Duff, but uh, I feel yeah. like the whole idea of family, even with you being in the other family, is a theme that goes throughout the show. Obviously, I'm I'm curious if someone can speak about like just the idea of family while recording a TV show, like a TV family, but then how you guys are really like a family now doing something like this, like outside of filming. Like it seems like you guys are sitting together and you're husband and wife and son and na- neighbor. I mean, it seems like it really carries over. Well, I think actors in general are fond of one another for lots of good reasons, but we also, there is something uh, bonding about having done this so many years yeah. ago, you know, right? And uh-huh. and a lot of us were um, sort of, uh, Stop me if this is wrong, Steve and Charlotte, but in a way, sort of career wise in similar places, that is New York actors who were working on stage and stuff. So it was all, you know, we were all emotionally in the same boat about it, really wanting it to work and learning on the job. And it was, it was great. And Steve and I, I, I was, Steve and I were very close. I remember Absolutely. we lived, we lived near each other and, we used to play tennis horribly together. <laughs> and um, I learned a lot from Steve, actually. I remember when we had the closing night party, uh, he said uh, that he wasn't going to go. And I said, what are you talking about? You have to go to the party. And he said, Peter, those parties are for other people. They're not for the actors to enjoy themselves or have fun. Hmm. It, it's just a... You know, it's just a business thing. And I, I can't remember if you showed up or not, but but I've often carried that with me because for so many years I'd show up to Broadway opening nights like, oh, this is going to be great. You know, and it's like, it's not about you, dude. It's about the producers and the money. And you're just there to for set decoration. <laughs> you know, but I'm, I remember I, I really admired it. I thought it was cool. You had I no used to be so much smarter then. You had no FOMO about it at all, and no hard feelings about it. No, no, you weren't. You were just really cool. You were just like, ah, eh, I don't think so. Hmm. It really made an impression on me. Thank you, sir. So Steve and I have played opposite each other since then. In plays, did how many? I know we did Vernon Early together. Oh, melts together. We did play. Oh. We played married. Vernon early. That's a. Yeah. For those who don't know, a Horton foot play. Yeah. Oh, tremendous it's play. It's weird that, that that happened, you know. And I, anyway, I think. Yeah. Yes. Danny, what was? I've it? always thought you traveled in a little higher circle, Charlotte. Oh yeah. You would get to go to the Denver Theater Center and. Do plays that I would be uh, jealous of. Okay, you got to. Go. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, you're I, right. You should be jealous. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Danny, being one of the younger uh, actors on the show, I mean, what was it like for you, like doing something like this as a? What would you say you were 13 at the time? Yeah, about 13. Yeah. So, I mean, what was the feeling like being on a big like nighttime show like at that age? Like, what was it like being a kid and doing that? Um, so I, I've always liked TV. I mean, I always liked TV. I was, I was, I was starstruck just by my co-stars. I mean, I, I was, I was in awe of every single one of them, um, and just watching their performances. And I remember like Charlotte, I, you had your voice and it was a little bit of a higher pitch voice. I thought that was your re- regular voice. I just, I just remember showing up each day going, you know, <laughs> like looking around and I remember, um, I remember show days, tape days, um, standing underneath the bleachers watching them bring people in and just seeing like you know the 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 life actually you know come into the studio when the audience would come in and watching them come in and just just that that energy and that feel of everything was just something i'd never experienced before so we we are i mean obviously this is a tgif podcast did you at that age i mean you're kind of the prime the prime audience did you have a concept of what tgif was did you understand like what what all was kind of going on around that Oh yeah, I was I was a big fan. Look, I was already watching dinosaurs, and I mean, I loved the TGIF lineup. So when they when we got to be part of the TGIF lineup, I was like, you know, hey, that that's my bread butter right there. TGIF, are you kidding me? 
I'm going to use nice. that as one of our opening right. theme songs. Uh, by the way. Um, do you, did you get a chance to meet any of the other cast members from any of the other shows or did any of you get a chance to interact with any of the other cast? No, not, not from that show. No. no. Cause I guess you guys were recording in Florida, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. And every, everyone else was somewhere else. Yeah. Who was, I mean, look, who, who, there was, there were two studios at Nickelodeon. One was our show. One was, uh, was a rotation. I know Clarissa explains it all was there. Uh, what would you do was taped at the same time because I was I actually I actually got to go on what would you do and meet Mark Summers Mark Summers we got to meet a couple of times he was a cool yeah. guy and there was, was another good. guy Mike Mike somebody he went on to be Mike O'Malley a, yeah Mike O'Malley yeah. yeah and Mike I remember having this conversation with Mike one time and he was he was so jealous that we were on a <laughs> real show you know he was like wow you guys are on a real show you know. And I, it's so it's so funny how how things work out. Who got what did he go on to do? Oh, he went, he did a bunch of a other Nickelodeon of shows, and he had some other yeah. shows too. Yeah, who got? Michael Mal- Yeah, well, he had some gets... primetime shows too. Michael yeah, Mal- yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. But... yeah. I remember um, also coming in late was Nick Arcade. Do you remember when Nick Arcade was filming across from us? And uh, upstairs in the offices, there was the uh, Nick Arcade offices and they had every single video game system and every single <laughs> video game for those systems they had the old sega genesis the old nintendos and everything and uh eric and i would go up there during our breaks and we get to play all the games we were like the official unofficial testers of the games there that's <laughs> so funny it was like living a dream out there you know yeah <laughs> yeah i, I couldn't imagine anything cooler at that people. age yeah our our crew just loving and supportive the guy who was uh i don't know our stage manager, our actor wrangler, whose name I can't think of, of course. When we looked at that um, that video clip, uh, we we had the two video clips recently, right? That we saw, one of us doing stuff, outtakes from the show and stuff, and then the one of all the crew people and things, and it's just wonderful, wonderful. What are you talking about, Steve? I never saw anything. It was oh, an sorry, art Pete. department that uh, the 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 art department was just extraordinary. They right. still tell you, everyone still thinks warmly back on the show too. We like we were part of something very special. Yeah, and it was very pioneering. It felt like it was you know, cool. It yeah, felt cool. And after this podcast, my phone going to be ringing off the hook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bill collectors, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, guys, thank you all for coming on tonight. We really do appreciate it. Um, it's it's really cool for us to go back and watch these shows, and then when we're able to get some of the cast on as well. I mean, it it's awesome for us, but also for everyone that listens as well. Now, when can we see this or whatever? Uh, yeah, I mean, Was this it. It should be up Friday, right, Travis? This Friday. Yeah, I think that's the plan is to have it up this Friday. We'll we'll have the podcast. We'll send you all links, and then. Um, there should be the video of it as well. I don't, normally that takes a little bit longer to get up on YouTube, but we'll try to have it up by this Friday. Cool. Yay. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank so, you very it's much. So, yeah. It's so fun for us to hang out a little bit, you oh. know? And we really, honestly, we, I just want to say, we, we both really enjoyed the show. It was a great, it was so much Good. fun to watch. And it's a, it's a shame that, I don't know, it doesn't have a better legacy because it's, it was such a good concept and it was so, it was so well done. So Maybe. Yeah, and there were a lot of great people involved with it. There really were. great people. They were. Um, we were lucky. Yeah. yeah. Anyone want to um, drop a line from the show or anything from, for the fans? Like, uh, Stephen, you want to Give do- us an Opu, Charlotte. Give me an Opu. <laughs> Come on, Charlotte. <laughs> Steve, Steve, I, I, Steve has one, don't yeah. you? Yeah. What? Clean your mic. <laughs> that thing. <laughs> no. well, well, what was that? that yeah charlotte yes i think i i don't know why i think this but i think you know best about what happened that prevented us from going on to do more shows because they talked to us about doing like 25 more shows and then what happened i don't know okay i because i'd heard there was a lawsuit <laughs> about the concept that someone had said a similar script. You know all this stuff that I don't know. <laughs> I like how I like to see how you know, and you're trying. Charlotte, you you know, right? <laughs> he always think, he tells me I'm the brains of the operation, but yeah. I think that's a snow job. I, yeah, I see it. No, I see Charlotte, it. I believe the same thing, and we have not colluded in any way. Right. I th- I and I remember thinking that at the time that Charlotte knew. 
and right. she and she you know there was a front of like oh you know what do i know but behind the scenes right she was she was a shark we management and to Charlotte. they didn't ever talk to me we've management, talked to a few different right. cast and one thing that i've noticed that is consistent is that the mom on the show always knows what's going on <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, everywhere Her, yeah. the mom always has tentacles and and everything that's going on so that's right and the guys were guys are only interested in what kind of car they got from avis that <laughs> three month period danny you want to know my uh my wandavision conspiracy so uh yeah. matt shackman he was on just the ten of us right before you guys started, and then he's the one that's behind uh, the beginning of Wandavision. Really? Yep. He's a teacher. I mean, it is scene yeah. for scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go. They do everything but have the bubbling over uh, crock uh, crock pot there, or whatever it was. Yeah. Right. The dinner not working out, the neighbor helping, everything about it. He was. Wow. We did a we did a reunion with the cast of uh, of just the ten of us, and he was the only one that didn't show up. And I really think it has something to do with that. <laughs> you know, if, you be called out. If, you, if you ever want to if you ever want to uh pull that conspiracy theory out you can also play in the the, the new loki show with the uh tva it's very similar to the uh SICK, the srp SICK relocation there. program yeah it's a, it's a very very black box kind of place too you know what i mean i'm gonna consider myself a part of the marvel universe thing just for the heck of it <laughs> it's canon it's done it's canon you're, you're in there the whole family uh, all right i gotta go I talk a five-year-old into bed but uh everyone thank you so much good luck with that good yeah. luck with that man i'm so sorry you guys. You thank you for everyone thank no. you everyone no thank you thank you danny for helping correct like i said for helping correct. i'm glad we were able to get this done and then of course i'm the one who screwed it all up that's so I, I really fine uh, it's all good yeah. but, Okay. Thank you, guys. guys. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a great night. All right, Steve, Danny. Yeah. Great to see you guys. Thanks, family. Oh, Thanks to see you all again. Good to see you again. We'll be in touch. Bye. Ciao. Bye, guys.